My name is Christian Stewart. I'm the managing director of a company that I founded called Family Legacy Asia. And I'm a family business and family governance consulting firm. So if, if you're in the private wealth management field in Asia, then the question is, are you there to help your Asian family clients preserve their wealth for generations? And um, if the goal is to preserve family wealth for generations, then I think the key thing is actually family decision making, how the family jointly make decisions together. And that's what family governance is all about. It's all about decision making processes. Maybe um, just to expand on that a little bit, you can look at family wealth in terms of this three circle model. So whether it's a family office or it's a family business, there's always a family circle, a management circle, and an ownership circle. And many Asian families, especially in first generation, they look at the management circle. They think the management of the business or the management of the wealth is the most important thing. But actually it turns out that the family circle is the most important circle and which all comes down to how the family make decisions together and the relationships between the family members. But one of the biggest issues that Asian families are facing, whether it's a business owning family or a fa financial family, is how to avoid family conflicts. And, uh, but most of the conflicts that Asian families have are actually very predictable conflicts. And uh, the best way to avoid these family conflicts is for the family to create a process of joint decision making together for the family to go through the process of planning ahead, making policies and deciding how they will avoid these predictable conflicts. So a family constitution is a written family document in which the family describe their family decision-making process. Usually they will formalize it into a body called a family council. The family council represents the whole family. The family council talks about the relationship between the family and the business or the family council sets the investment parameters, the risk parameters, and the family constitution tells you who's in the family council, how the family council makes decisions together, what the family council does if there's a deadlock, if they cannot make decisions together, and then an important part of it is how do you deal with a situation where one family member wants to exit, whether it's exit from the jointly owned family portfolio or exit from the family business. You have a lot of family conflicts in Asia over the issue of somebody who wants to exit and there's no process and procedure for exiting. You know, there's been um, many, many recent examples both in Hong Kong and Singapore and also in Taiwan that you can easily think of, of very high profile families that are very, very wealthy that have had family conflicts. And some research which has been done in Hong Kong shows that on average, if you have a family controlled listed business in Asia, then on the death of the founder or when there's a transition from first generation to second generation, the share price will fall by about 50% on average for a, for a five year window period. So these conflicts are giving rise to huge value loss for the family as well as for other investors. I think one of the lessons in Asia often is that Asian families need to have a family forum so that these family conflicts don't have to take place in the family business. And hopefully if they have a family forum, like a family council, they will avoid the family conflicts to start with. Um, another lesson is that if you have a conflict resolution policy or a conflict resolution process in advance, then you have a much better chance as a family of going through that process um, successfully and having a successful outcome to a conflict rather than a destructive conflict. Maybe just one more, one more lesson to add, which is a, which is a favorite of mine, is that a lot of the wealthy Asian family businesses or financial families, they use family trusts. You know, they've been using family trusts for the last 20 to 30 years. But it's pretty clear that these family trusts are not avoiding the family conflict. So I think the message is very clear to me that you need some, a governance process in addition to any kind of trust arrangement that the family has. Well, I think a good way for a family to start if they want to create a family constitution is to go to some conferences, to go to some, uh, to get some education, get education about what are the typical issues faced by business owning families anywhere in the world, or if it's a financial family to get some, go to get, and get some education around governance issues relevant to financial families and go to some family office conferences. And, um, but to create family governance, 
you usually need, you need to be able to step back and suspend the way the family normally make decisions together so that you can think about what is the best way that we should make decisions together. So many families find that they actually need to work with an outside advisor to help them to step back so that they can stop their natural decision making process, that they can get away from the natural family hierarchy for a period of time and then think about what actually what is the right way that we should be doing this. So it is helpful to work with an outside uh, facilitator or an outside ad advisor. Usually there's a common process to take. You know, the, the first step is for the advisor to meet with the different family members on one-on-one -on -one conversations and find out what are the issues facing that particular family. Then the advisor will often give some kind of feedback report which helps to table the issues in a way which doesn't give away any confidentiality um, in, a, in a safe way. Then the family will have a family meeting to talk about the issues. Usually then they will form a family council, then they will form a family constitution, and then they will start working on family policies. Actually it's the ongoing processes that they create, ongoing meetings that they create, which is the important thing. Brilliant. Now on a separate note, I know yes. you just arrived, so I know you haven't been here for the whole summit, yes. but can you kind of try and get a little testimonial? Yes.